Hi Caroline, uh, thanks for your time. Um, yeah, I'd like to talk about the Green Party Action Plan for Animals that you launched a little while ago. What's the general aim of that plan? Um, it's to just illustrate to people in London that there are a lot of issues around animals. If you're an animal lover, then obviously those issues will be a concern to you. But also actually, even if you don't, you wouldn't sort of class yourself as an animal lover, there are issues that do affect you. And you know, if we don't take action on these issues, um, you know, it has a detrimental effect on everyone. One of the key things that, that gets in the press recently has been dangerous dogs. Um, there seems to be big issues around either particularly children getting assaulted by dogs, but also these kinds of status dogs. Um, see, the cat hears the word <laughs> dogs and has to, uh, has to jump in. Um, what's the Green Party position on those dogs? Um, I mean, that something needs to be done more than has been done. The, the Dangerous Dogs Act is a complete failure. And as a vet myself, when the Act first came in, there obviously was an issue with dangerous dogs, but it was much less than it is now. The Act has really had the opposite effect, mm -hmm. um, which is to make these dogs sort of status symbols. So there's many more of them, um, and there's a much bigger problem. And it really is more about responsible pet ownership rather than blaming particular breeds. Mm -hmm. um, any breed can, you know, any breed, any type of dog can be aggressive if it's not looked after properly. So would you be for reintroducing the dog licences that were abolished some time ago? Yep, and now that would actually be easier because there's a technology with microchipping, so mm -hmm. compulsory microchipping um, would, is a policy that we recently introduced. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So there are two aspects to the uh, action plan, one's on pets and one's on the wildlife. Um, do you see the kind of where where are your kind of priorities on that? Um, I mean, I think they're both important. As a vet, I'm obviously sort of at the cold face of what's going on with with pets, and you know, quite frequently we sort of see dogs that are brought in um, having mm. been attacked or actually even been used in dog fighting. Um, and I know that you know the RSPCA they're seeing terrible numbers of dogs that are involved in dog fighting and dogs that are being abandoned, dogs that are being put to sleep. So. You know, that's a very serious situation we've got in London at the moment. Uh, so in Big Smoke over Christmas we were promoting the campaign against puppy farms. Is that, is that part of the action plan? Puppy farms and the breeding of dogs? Yeah, I mean it's all linked. Um, irresponsible pet ownership you know, comes about because of irresponsible breeding and it's really, um, there's no control over it at all. So, I mean there's, there's people breeding dogs without thinking about it. But the other side of that is the puppy farms, which obviously people who are very much thinking about breeding dogs, but purely for profit. Um, they're not thinking about the dogs, where they're going to go to, what's going to happen to them. Mm -hmm. And, you know, they come into um, London, often they get mixed with a lot of other dogs, end up in pet shops where people buy them, not knowing that they've come from a puppy farm. Mm -hmm. And they, they're buying a, a lot of problems, unfortunately. Um, we had a case just before Christmas. A guy had spent, you know, not an insignificant amount of money to buy his um, kids a puppy, lovely mm -hmm. puppy. It get sick, we did everything we could, but it died of a preventable infectious disease. So there's also mention of the London food strategy. What, does the, what, what is the London Food Strategy for the Green Party? Um, I mean, it's obviously wider than just animal issues. You know, mm -hmm. there's, there's a lot of problems in areas of London with food poverty. Um, obviously, that links into health and obesity. Um, on the animal side of it, um, it's recognising that you know, there are problems with how our food is produced, particularly how our meat and our dairy is produced, mm -hmm. and also that, that there are sort of health implications to our diet as well as environmental. So is the animal, is the emphasis on animal welfare? Or? I think you have to consider all aspects. I mean, I've had to work on farms and um, you know, also in an abattoir during my training, so mm -hmm. I've seen what goes on on farms. And, you know, if you have that awareness, you feel that Something does need to be does need to be done about it. So um, how much how much kind of scope does the London Assembly have in making London's food more 
ethical or ensuring animal welfare standards in farming? I mean, it, it has a, a re, you know reasonable budget in terms of procurement, and you know around the Olympics, there's been issues. You know, there was a food strategy for the Olympics, and um, Assembly Member Jenny Jones did some work on that, and you know has criticised, for example, you know McDonald's being mm -hmm. one of the leading sponsors. They've made some improvements, but you know there's still a long, long way to go. I was intrigued by part of the action plan, which talks about boroughs having to adopt an ecology opportunities plan, um, but I wasn't quite sure what that meant. Um, I mean, there is a lot of wildlife in London, um, but it's often sort of hidden away. People don't necessarily realise it's there, um, and we could be doing more to support that wildlife. Um, also, joining up between boroughs as well. Um, there's a bit of a problem at the moment that. Mm -hmm. Um, you know, a borough might look at its own where its own wildlife is in its wildlife corridor, which is you know where the wildlife might be able to travel, you know, so they can go breed, and then that ends at the edge of the borough. Mm -hmm. So, mm -hmm. you know, that's somewhere where um, the assembly, the mayor, having a sort of you know looking over the whole of London, can influence them, can influence the boroughs. So that's quite interesting. So there are some councils that are better for for wildlife than others. So Islington foxes better off than happy ones? Um, I mean foxes is, is a whole other <laughs> issue, um, obviously, but yeah, birds and small mammals and that sort of thing. I mean I know I recently commented on Hackney's biodiversity plan, um, mm -hmm. which actually was you know a, a good document. I want to see them actually do something with that. But you know, there was a lot of um, you know knowledge and expertise in there, but you know, these things don't stop at the edge of the bar. Okay, I'm going to press you a little bit because you said foxes are a different matter. What does that mean? Yes. What's the strategy towards foxes? Well, I think foxes are great, and I think that the way they have evolved to live in the city is, um, you know, is amazing. But you know, they do cause problems. I appreciate that. Um, you know, they when they make a mess in the garden, that's never going to go down very well. But people who call for culling of foxes, um, you know, that would be completely detrimental. I mean obviously there'd be big welfare problems but it would make the problem worse mm -hmm. and that's generally the case with um, any culling. Um, as long as the environment's still there where they can live and they've got food and they've got somewhere to, to, to live and sleep, mm -hmm. you cull foxes, other foxes will just come in from elsewhere to enjoy that nice environment and because they're coming in trying to find territory they'll fight there'll be more disease, there'll be more aggression, they will breed and the problem will be actually come back worse. So holes are a very bad idea. So it's quite interesting this idea of biodiversity because I think when most people think about biodiversity they think about the countryside or maybe jungles in faraway countries. Mm -hmm. They don't tend to think about the urban environment like London. But obviously there is kind of biodiversity issues, aren't there? Oh yeah, absolutely. Yeah, and you know it is evolving all the, all the time. Mm -hmm. And is that under threat or should we, are there things that we should be doing to protect that biodiversity, is it important? I think, I think it is important, um, I think it's important just for the fact of the animals themselves but actually it's something that can give pleasure to a lot of people in London. There's a fox that potters around Upper Street sometimes and you see in the morning people are walking to work, head down, they look a little bit miserable and you know they see this fox and you know, okay, so you might think sometimes they're a pain, but actually just to see that wildlife around you, people are looking, smiling, um, I think most people would think that that was a, a positive thing. So I guess, just to round off the interview, um, in a time of cuts, and in a time when there's a lot of economic pressure on councils and on the assembly and on everybody, I mean, where, what are your kind of budget priorities in terms of animals? Like, are there, things you could resource or the things you can't? Um, I mean, I think that is one of those situations, as in many of these cuts, that unfortunately if you make the cuts it ends up costing you a lot elsewhere. So, you know, for example, having dog wardens, animal welfare staff on councils, you know, if they're actually going around being involved in education, which is something we think is very important, um, you know, education about how to look after your pet, doing things to just make sure people are have responsible ownership, dealing with people who are breeding irresponsibly, mm -hmm. that is going to save 
people from injury and bites and the cost associated with that is very high as well. It was 450 um, bites I think that ended up you know, requiring some sort of hospital treatment so um, say 2010 it's to 2011. Then. So it's, you know, it's an investment that's actually going to save money in the long run. Okay, well that's great. Well thanks for your time. Thank you.